Hello, good afternoon. This is the L24 News. I'm coming up next. The ex Libya commander Khalifa Haftar announced candidacy for December's election. George Kordai, I am open to any solution that restores Lebanon's relations with the Gulf states. A victory or draw would allow the Algerian football national team to advance to the playoffs for the 22 World Cup in Qatar. Hello again. First in our top stories, Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad stated that Ministerial Meeting of African Union Peace and Security Council, which was organized by remote video communication technology, was devoted to discussing the issue of comb combating terrorism and violence extremism in the African continent. The head of the Algerian diplomacy, Ramtan Lamamra, highlighted the, the need of, to formulate and adopt a comprehensive and integrated approach based on specific circumstances of each country and aimed at addressing terrorism roots. Lamamra noted his statement is based on lessons learned from Algeria experience in the field of combating terrorism and violent extremism. First session of the dialogue between the government and Tunisian General Labour Union was held under the chairmanship of Secretary General Nordin Tabobi in the capital Tunis. Prime Minister Boudin stressed that dialogue with labor organization must be honest and frank to establish a participatory action between the two parties, as they must move as a steady pace toward radical reforms and achieve demands of Tunisians. Prime Minister of National Unity Government in Libya, Abdel Hamid al Dabaiba, considered December's election flow, flowed and acts to serve specific candidates including that he would announce whether he runs for the presidency at the crucial moment. Zahra followed the story. Libyans are hoping the elections and the state of division between the different parties. However, they have become a dilemma after they were considered the only way out of the current conjuncture. In the depth of the crisis, the Prime Minister of the Libyan Interim Government of National Unity, Abdel Hamid al dabeiba attacked the election law, considering it to serve specific candidates. There are many obstacles in the way of the Libyan elections, including the rules for organizing this consultation, which has worsened the Libyan scene. Especially after the announcement of Aqila Saleh, who ratified the presidential election law without involving the Supreme Council in his intention to run. Saif al-Islam's legal status is also a matter of controversy as he is wanted by the International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity. In light of these recent developments taking place in Libya, with the Libyan elections approaching the end of next December, Khalifa Haftar, who holds American citizenship, also entered the line by announcing his official candidacy for the presidential elections amid Libyan warnings of the consequences of this step. And for more on Libya's election, Mr. Murad, IT assistant lecturer from Galma University, join us live via Skype call. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. We would love to know the upcoming presidential elections could end up a decade of instability in Libya and how do you think it would be managed? Yeah, thank you for having me today. It's a great pleasure to be um, on your uh, channel. Well, Thank you. First of all, we all know the situation in, in Libya after almost a decade of the NATO intervention. Libya is practically what we call in political science a failed state, right? Even the institutions which are there already are not really um, those what the, 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 the Libyan uh, people uh, really wanted one day. So the situation is really uh, complicated. Uh, it's a total... Uh, uh, failure after a decade of the NATO intervention. And we have seen uh, this morning, for instance, the demonstrations in, in Tripoli after the announcement of, of uh, the candidacy of Khalifa Haftar. So um, elections are going to be the, the only solution. Of course not, because all of these uh, uh, people who run so far are going to serve as proxies for superpowers who are already there. And the Algerians have condemned, for instance,
instance, the intervention of uh, uh, different powers uh, in the Libyan scene. So, Murad, and what, what do you think about Islam's uh, al Qaddafi as well as the ex-leader Khalifa Haftar and Salah and uh, Salah Akila nomination for presidency? Are they going to be accepted by Libyans, taking into consideration the political background? What do you think? Uh, exactly. In order to answer this question, we have first to understand the makeup of the Libyan society. As you know, Libya now is totally uh, divided be between two powers. One, which is uh, in Benghazi uh, and represented by the uh, the the, the um, strong man, which is who is, for instance, uh, Khalifa Haftar. In addition to Aguila Saleh, uh, in the west we have uh, uh, Dbiba, uh, the actual uh, um, head of, of government, who did not declare his nomination or candidacy yet, but I think he's going to, to do so if the uh, the conditions are uh, favorable. For Khalifa Haftar, you know, it's, it's, it's the guy who is backed by different uh, um, uh, international powers. He's backed by the Russians, the French, the, Egypt, the Egyptians next door, uh, several uh, Gulf countries and so on. On the other side, we have um, uh, the, 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 the second, let's say, camp in Tripoli, which is backed by the Turks and the Qataris. We have to understand this, right? So um, uh, the three the three nominations are very controversial. In the morning, after the declaration of Khalifa Haftar's uh, candidacy, we've seen uh, people in Tripoli uh, who were totally against uh, Khalifa, uh, Khalifa Haftar. They were demonstrating in the streets and so on. And the same with Islam al Qaddafi, who is not really accepted by the vast majority because he represents what the, um, the the former Libyan regime stood for 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 a long, long period of time, which is dictatorship, right? So. We, we were waiting for the Biba as well to announce his nomination uh, soon uh, and, and see how the whole picture is, is going to be. But uh, for sure, these are proxies for international powers first. And second, uh, elections um, are not the only solution now. We, we, we need to go for uh, reconciliation first between the Libyans themselves, uh, right? And the Algerians, for instance, in the, in the, um, the Paris conference, uh, back at the idea of having any elections, along with some, some other measures, you know, uh, because it's not good for Europe, for, for instance, to, to, to have a, fa a failed state on the other shore of the Mediterranean. Um, uh, the, the illegal immigration and the human trafficking, all these issues uh, uh, had an impact, an immediate impact on Europe in the, in the uh, ongoing uh, uh, refugee uh, crisis. Well, Mr. Murad Atti, Assistant Lecturer in Kalmas University, thank you so much for being with us. Much appreciated. In another story, two loud explosions rocked Uganda's capital, Kampala, early today, Tuesday, sparking chaos and confusion as people fled out. It is widely believed to be coordinated attacks, according to Emmanuel Ain Boyana, a spokesman for the Ministry of Health said in a Twitter post at least 24, 24 people have been hospitalized with injuries sustained in the blast. Four of them are critically injured. He said at Parliamentary Avenue, well, the second explosion occurred. All streets have been cordoned off by security with the legislator and parliamentary staffy evacuated. The Allied Democratic Forces, an affiliate of the Islamic State Group in Central Africa, claimed responsibility for the attack on Italy. In another story, the Moroccan government decided to withdraw the draft law number 1016 related to the completion and change of the criminal code from the House of Representatives, which includes an article on the criminalization of illicit enrichment after nearly six years of its referral to the legislative institution, which sparked a lot of controversy among experts, Hussam Ripples. The Moroccan government's withdrawal of the draft criminal law from the parliament sparked controversy in the country between those who argued that the reasons for the withdrawing the law are related to the text of illegal enrichment and those who saw that it was withdrawn in order to introduce amendments, including those related to pre-trial detention and some texts related to individual freedoms. The project, which was referred by the government of Abdel Ilah bin Kiran to parliament in 2016, sparked a lot of debates in the legislative institution, preventing it from being discussed, especially the parts related to the illegal enrichment. 
Amid the surprise of the Moroccan people, many political parties expressed their concern, describing what happened as a dangerous slip of the government. The Moroccan government justified the move by the necessity of discussing the controversial bill as a whole. Mustafa Bites, minister-delegate to the prime minister in charge of relations and parliament and the government official spokesperson, said that the leader decided to withdraw the draft criminal law from parliament due to the difficulty of discussing it in parts. A 26-year-old Palestinian was put to death on Monday after the clashes between Palestinians and Zionist occupation forces in the city of Tobas. Palestinian Ministry of Health stated that Saddam Hussein Buni Uday received a bullet on his left shoulder to penetrate to his heart. Zionist occupation forces started many arrestations around the country, starting with the seven citizens in the West Bank. According to them, the East in 24, the Lebanese Minister of Information, George Corday, said he is open to any solutions that benefits Lebanon and restores the relations with the Gulf states after a diplomatic crisis with his country following an uproar over his statements about the war in Yemen. And Kurdahi added to Lebanese MTV channel, I feel with the people and understand their concerns. I am not a stumbling block and I am not stubbornly claiming to ministry because the ministry is not mine and does not belong to my home. Also, Keen has been accused with 15 others of manipulating the 2020 election. Such allegations were used by the army to justify the coup which took place in February. Islam Seed reports. Myanmar general set off charges against the former president Aung San Suu Kyi along with 15 others, including the former head of commission for foreign elections. The accusations come at a time when Myanmar military led a coup on February on the pretext of violations and lawless actions, after which Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy won in a landslide during the November ballots, in which monitors who observed the polls emphasize on the credibility and transparency of elections. On the other hand, the overthrown Myanmar leader lawyers have said that she couldn't attend a court hearing for health reasons. According to the state-run Global New Light of Myanmar, the 16 members violated a number of electoral laws, including over-military polling booths, advanced voting for people above 60 years of age, and getting the names of people who had no right to cast votes on the ballot. The coup put an end to a 10-year democratic experiment in which the military was guaranteed a role in governance under a constitution crafted by the latter. The coup has sparked enormous outrage resulting in protests, huge civil disobedience and the formation of people's defense forces to combat the military, according to the Assistant Association for Political Prisoners, which has been tracking the response, 1,260 individuals have been slain as security forces try to suppress opposition to their government. The European Union agreed to stop up sanctions against billions of thousands of migrants standing in freezing force on its border with the UAE and France and warned Russia that NATO would be prepared to defend the sovereignty of Ukraine, where it is alleged Moscow has been standing in a trouble with that. Marwa reports. The sanctions regime was amended by way of a council decision and a council regulation, which broadened the listing criteria on which specific designation can be based. The European Union will now be able to target individuals and entities organizing or contributing to activities by the Lukashenko regime that facilitate illegal crossing of the European Union's external borders. The European Union has agreed to step up sanctions against Belarus, who is accused of pushing migrants towards its Polish and Lithuanian borders to undermine security. The European Union says Moscow has a role in building the migration pressure and could actively help in easing it. I talked with the Belarusian minister to tell him that the situation was completely unacceptable, that humanitarian help has to be provided and that we have to think about how can we solve the problem, starting by stopping the flow, stopping the flights. This is almost done. The sanctions are always effective. Are always effective because they affect people, they affect their wealth, 
and their capacity of movements. And today we are going to approve a new package of sanctions against uh, Belarusian people responsible for what's happening in the country. French President Emmanuel Macron raised concerns as Moscow said to be staging a troop build-up near Ukraine borders. An advisor to Macron told reporters of the conversation Macron initiated via phone call to Russian President Vladimir Putin as part of an outbreak of conversations between Western leaders and Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. The French reader spoke of his strong concern over the situation on Ukraine's borders. Today's decision follow the European Council conclusions of 21 and 22 October 2021, in which European Union leaders declared that they would not accept any attempt by third countries to instrumentalize migrants for political purposes, condemned all hybrid attacks at the European Union's borders and affirmed that it would respond accordingly. A virtual meeting was held by the leaders of two superpowers, the USA and China. The meeting called for lowering the tension between the two poles and tackled numerous fights. Taiwan issue was the top fight that the two leaders discussed. Osama, yeah, on watch for A three-hour virtual meeting was held on Monday between U.S. leader Joe Biden and his counterpart Xi Jinping. This long high-level diplomacy meeting discussed various files. The start was when Biden stated that the responsibility of these two superpowers leaders should remain positive, and it's their responsibility to prevent the relations between the two economic poles from veering to a conflict, whether intended or unintended. Chi started the meeting by calling his American counterpart as his old friend, as both of the presidents seemed determined to decrease tension in the relation between the countries on the most turbulent areas of their relations. As stated by Chinese officials, Taiwan Xu was the top file in the talk. This comes after Chinese military deployed increasing numbers of fighter jets near Taiwan, which they consider as part of the territories. While U.S. considers the island as self-ruled, Chinese military held exercises near Taiwan region in response to the visit of the American congressional delegation in the island. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Xiao Lijiang stated Monday that Taiwan issue concerns China's sovereignty and territorial integrity, adding that it's China's core interest. Despite the domestic challenges, Biden was described to come to the meeting from a position of force, while Xi stressed that China and U.S. should coexist in peace and respect the win-win cooperation between the two countries. No joint statement was released by the two leaders, as they both showed that face-to-face meeting is more preferable for further discussions. And from now, only a few hours separate us from the decisive meeting of the national team against Burkina Faso, which will take place today, November 16th, at 5 p.m. Indeed, this football confrontation coming within the framework of the sixth and the final day of the qualifiers for the, dub, for the 2020 World Cup in Qatar will be played on the lawn of the Mustafa Chakar Stadium in Al Buleida. It should also be noted that today's meeting will be marked by the presence of 14,000 spectators, a number defined by the African Football Confederation, following the request of the Algerian Football Federation in this regard. To this end, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. Let's just have a reminder for our main top stories. Ex-Libya Commander Khalifa Hitler, Haftar announces candidates for December's election. George Corday, I'm open to any solution that resolves Lebanon's relations with the Gulf states. A victory or draw would allow Algerian football national team to advance to playoffs for the 2020 World Cup in Qatar. Best of luck for our Algerian national team. And for now, that's all that we have. Stay tuned for our official news edition at 6 p.m. Take care. Bye-bye.